Hello and welcome. I am Rajdeep Chandrakar and I am Senior Faculty of Geography at Abhimanyu YS. Today we are going to discuss an important initiative which, is, which was recently launched by Ministry of Earth Sciences. So in the month of September 2024, Union Cabinet approved this mission, that is Mission Mausam. So we'll look into different aspects that why this kind of mission is required. What is the need of Mission Mausam? What will be the impact of such kind of mission? What will be the impact on different stakeholders on different sectors? So you must have observed that in the last two, three years, the weather phenomenon has become erratic because of multiple anthropogenic factors. You must have observed the formation of rare cyclone in the month of August in Arabian Sea that was named Cyclone Asna. You might have observed the Cloudburst event in the hilly and mountainous region of Himalayas and Western Ghats. You might have observed the flood in the Telangana Plateau in the Hyderabad region or Rayal Sima region. So all this indicates the erratic nature of the monsoon or the erratic nature of the weather. So that's why a advanced or robust weather forecasting system is required. And hence this kind of mission was launched by the Union Government or the Ministry of Earth Sciences. So if we look into the mission, then the union cabinet has approved a budget outlay of over rupees 2000 crore for two years. So we'll spend 2000 crore for two years to create a more weather ready and climate smart Bharat. Now what is weather ready and climate smart Bharat? That is, we will have an advanced or robust weather forecasting system. So what will be the benefit of this kind of weather forecasting system. The benefit will be across the sectors as well as to different stakeholders. If we talk about the sectors, then we can divide different sectors like primary sector, secondary sector or services or tertiary sector. If we look into the primary sector, then in primary sector, agriculture is a very important component which is severely affected if there is erratic nature of monsoon. If there is less rainfall, then there will be less productivity. So agriculture is totally dependent upon monsoon as far as India is concerned. Similarly, different industries like uh, textile industry or the iron and steel industry for that matter is dependent upon the monsoon because the water availability, the raw material is also getting affected by this kind of weather phenomenon. If we talk about the services sector, then there, there is a very good example as far as the effect of weather phenomenon is concerned that last year uh, in the month of summer there was less snowfall or little to no snowfall in the region of Gulmarg and Sonmarg in Kashmir because of which the tourism industry got impacted. The summer tourism, the skiing industry, the adventurous industry got impacted because of this kind of snowfall. So that's how if there is a better uh, weather forecasting system we will be able to outreach to these kind of sectors. As far as stakeholders are concerned, then stakeholders like government institutions and private institutions will be better equipped as far as the uh, forecasting related to weather is concerned. The individuals and last mile users will be better equipped if we have better information related to weather phenomenon. So that's how it will benefit different sectors. Now let us look what this will do. It is a basically a multifaceted and transformative initiative which will tremendously boost India's weather system, India's weather and climate related science, research and services. Also, this will better equip stakeholders including citizens and last mile users in tackling extreme weather events. For example, if we, are back, uh, if we have information about the uh, upcoming weather phenomenon, then we will be better equipped. So, the impacts of climate change can be mitigated if we are better informed. This mission will focus in improving the observations and understanding for providing highly accurate and timely weather and climate information across temporal and spatial scales. Now, temporal is related to time, spatial is related to space. So, across different time zones, that is, if there is a month long weather forecasting or week long weather forecasting or hourly basis weather forecasting then temporal and 
if we talk about the spatial nature then state wise region wise or district wise or micro analysis of weather forecasting can be done through this mission mission mausam for example if we take an example of cloud burst now cloud burst is such a event that happens when there is a 10 cm as per as far as the imd definition is concerned that happens when there is a 10 cm rainfall in one hour in 10 square kilometer area now most of our weather stations are distantly located or especially especially the distance is more so in this scenario if we have more weather stations then we will be able to theoretically at least we will be able to predict the cloud burst event as well so there are so this will be the benefit of this kind of mission that is mission mausam now which are the institutions that are implementing this kind of mission the institutions are there are three institutes which are under ministry of earth sciences first one is definitely the indian meteorological department imd which is looking holistically into the mission mausam second is indian institute of tropical meteorology and the third is national center for medium range weather forecasting so all these three institutes are basically implementing this mission mausam if we look into the components as far as mission mausam is concerned so there are multiple components related to mis uh, mission mausam that is we will first incorporate next generation radars and satellites for weather observation and weather forecasting so for the observation purposes we will have advanced radars and satellites installed under the outlay of 2000 crore then we will also use supercomputers for better computation of all the data that is being collated then we will use the gis based automated decision support system that on this basis they will relay the information to the last mile users all the or the stakeholders that okay we have collated this much data we have collected this much data this is what is the prediction as far as the weather phenomenon is concerned so this is how a automated decision support system will be installed or the this is one of the component of mission mausam apart from this there will be use of artificial intelligent intelligence and machine learning as well so a mausam gpt will also be used as far as data dissemination or the observation or the prediction and calculation is concerned these are the components as far as mission mausam is uh, is concerned so mission mausam is definitely a right step as far as the observation from meteorology or climatology point of view is concerned it is very much required considering the changing nature of climate change so definitely the impact of climate change is huge on different stakeholders we need to study it with more accuracy more, with better observation so that's why this mission is the right step in the right direction.